So right now, I'm playing a slideshow for you of every photo I've ever developed that exhibits reticulation. So why is the screen black? Because I've never had a photo develop reticulation. And believe me, I have tried. Reticulation looks kind of like this. I've simulated it the best I can in Photoshop CS6. I left some links in the video's description for articles that have actual samples of reticulation. Reticulation is a boogeyman to photographers. But in researching the video and in trying to cause film to reticulate, I found that it's nearly impossible to do that with modern stocks. So I went over to Fotrio and I asked about how to cause reticulation. If you're a member of Fotrio, you probably know Photo Engineer and the vast amount of knowledge that he has about film engineering. And his response to my question about this was that you can hear his words exactly. You can reticulate modern films by treating them badly. You cannot do it by normal processing. This refers to Kodak, Fuji, and Ilford films. I would like to know how one reticulates Tri-X. That would probably require processing at high temperature and then plunging it into an ice bath. And other threads in that um, provide lots of additional detail about people's experience with this exact subject and the, um, the challenges that people have had. As I, I read more and more into it, I learned that reticulation occurs in modern film stocks when the emulsion is heated during the developing process at some point to within two or three degrees centigrade of the emulsion's melting point. I don't know what the temperature is for modern stocks, and I'm sure that that melting point varies between films, but I would guess that that temperature is hot enough that if you own a steel developing tank, you're going to need oven mitts when you put in your hot fluid bath. So then after being exposed to a very hot temperature, you need to then put the film into an ice water bath, and that causes the emulsion to shrink and crack. So reticulation is simply a shrinking and cracking of the film emulsion uh, that leads to different thicknesses and thinnesses on the film, which is what causes the reticulation pattern. But if you superheat the pre-soak water, your film and tank will be over temperature for the developer. They'll bring the developer temperature up and you're just going to overdevelop your film. So if you superheat the developer, it's going to ruin your film by overdeveloping it to the point that it's probably just near perfectly opaque. Okay, so um, if you superheat the stop bath, the film will still develop because the stop isn't a perfectly instantaneous stop. So the film will continue to develop, to develop at a faster rate until the stop takes effect, which will result in the film being somewhat overdeveloped. So that means you need to basically superheat the fix. You know, have fun breathing those fumes. And then after you have fixed the film in this super hot fix, use a near freezing rinse. But the fix would have to be a pretty precise and very high temperature, and figuring out what that temperature is would require a lot of experimentation. So in a nutshell, reticulation has been effectively engineered out of modern emulsions, and so effectively engineered out that achieving reticulation in a modern film stock will be nearly impossible. So reticulation as a negative flaw falls into the category now of something that is almost an urban legend.